suppose you took 20 healthy individuals and followed them over time and during that time period you notice that five of them developed a disease here represented as yellow that would mean the incidence rate in this data would be 5 over 20 because we had 5 new cases and 5 divided by 20 is also 1 fourth or 25 percent so we can say that that is the incidence now let's say that we took this data as a representative sample and decided to apply it to another set of 20 people or another set of 20 healthy individuals we could say that each individual or we could say that in those other 20 people we would also expect 5 new cases of that disease but the thing is we wouldn't know exactly which ones would be the ones who would get the disease for example instead of these five it could be this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy so it could be any five from the twenty therefore we could say that overall each individual would have a twenty five percent chance of developing that disease it would also mean that if you took four people then one of that person from those four people would have the disease so since this disease is showing up uh, in every fourth person we could say that if we take four people and and apply something that would prevent them some measure that would prevent them from getting that disease then we could say that we have potentially saved one new case of that disease this is the whole concept behind number needed to treat number needed to treat is usually one divided by absolute risk reduction also known as attributable risk but the main thing to know is that it's one divided by a certain type of incidence data and that's how we get it for example since our incidence here was 5 out of 20 if we flip that or get the inverse of that that would mean that our result would be 20 divided by 5 which is equal to 4 in other words we would get a number 4 and that would be our number to treat and as you can see in this equation in this picture or diagram that if we prevent four people from getting this disease you would have prevented one potential case suppose you followed two groups of 20 people with coronary artery disease over a span of about 10 years one of those groups or one of those groups with 20 people liked to exercise every day and they would exercise every day while the other group of 20 people did not like it or enjoy exercising and would not exercise every day you notice during the course of your study that in the group that did not exercise every day 15 of them died so we could say that in this group our incidence rate of death would be 15 over 20 or 3 fourths or 75 percent whereas in the group that exercised you noticed that only five of them died in this case or in this group the incidence rate for death was therefore 5 out of 20 or 1 over 4 or 25 percent thus we could say that in this group of people who who did exercise the chance of each one of them dying was about 25 percent presented here the yellow being the risk for or chance of them dying while in the group that did not exercise we could say that the risk of each one of them uh, dying during that study was three-fourth or seventy-five percent there is one more thing that we can notice too if we compare this group in the in the study we could see that these five people were gonna die even if they exercised or did not exercise and these five people would stay alive regardless of exercising or not therefore we can say that the ones who were truly affected or really affected were these people meaning 10 out, out of 20 of them you can see that over here and this is the concept of attributable risk in other words we can attribute not exercising we could attribute not exercising to be the factor that caused the death of these 20 people sorry of these 10 people or you could say that we could attribute exercising to save these 10 people so these are the people that were that were actually affected in the study and we could see then that would mean that each person in this 
in this scenario would have a 50% chance of acquiring that disease. That would also mean that if we had such a scenario, we would need to treat two people or prevent the disease of two people in order to save one potential case. And you can see that here and here and here and so on. This is again the concept behind number to needed to treat. So we went from an incidence rate of 3 fourths to 1 fourth. And if we subtract the two, we can see 3 fourths minus 1 fourth is 2 fourths, which correctly resembles the people who were truly affected in that study or by the factors in that study. So that would mean that our attributable risk would be 2 fourths. And since number needed to treat is equal to 1 divided by attribu attributable risk, we could say that the number needed to treat would be the inverse of 2 fourths, which would be 4 over 2, and thus 2. So our number needed to treat would be 2, and that correctly correlates with this diagram in which we can see that we would need to prevent the disease in two people in order to prevent, to prevent one potential case of that outcome.